Is the supernatural realm real? There are eerie, unexplainable things that happen that I believe confirm that the demonic is interacting with our world right now. I'm joined together with Carrie and Chuck, and they've been in the entertainment industry for 30 years, but their newest film, Nefarious, is going to blow your mind. And I, I want them to just jump right into it. What are the weirdest things that happen while you are on set that really confirm that when you're confronting and exposing the demonic, it is real? The demonic resistance, by the way, to this film being allowed to be shown has been off the charts. I mean, we've had our roof in Burbank, California, ripped off, mm. literally. A whole roof I'm not the talking building. the asphalt shingles. I'm talking about the, the entire roof. roof. And it turned, it was during the torrential rainstorms out here. And that was the only building that that happened to. The I mean, we had eight car destroyed. crashes in 11 days when we were shooting. No one got hurt, but all the cars were totaled. I mean, come on. While we're shooting the scenes where we're talking and revealing the devil, the building's girders are groaning from wind. And the bottom line is we stop shooting about the, we stop shooting. Uh, we get to the part where we're not talking about the devil, totally silent. The we wind were, disappears. We've been told Go back to shooting about the devil. It comes again. We had a priest, we had a ministry team on set. The priest's appendix explodes. Wow. Okay. For we're sure. talking about many of the major players that were involved with us. Steve Dace was in the hospital, almost died from a mysterious infection. The night before our release. Everybody came to pray over him and wow. suddenly... Our, I mean, it is tip of the our iceberg. marketing chief on the way home, and it's this critical time the, on the way flight home from the premiere, his ear burnt, drum perforated. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Uh, so what we're talking about here, and, and what we're talking about here is obviously if you agitate the devil, if you go to war against the devil, he fights back. He doesn't want to be revealed. And I'm telling you, your audience should the not be scared. They should be excited. This is bullets for your gun as a Christian. The adversary yeah. does not want your – here's the simplest test. The adversary absolutely does not want your audience seeing this film. So what should you to the, do? To the point where when we started off, when we chose our release date, there was nothing here. They moved The Pope's Exorcist onto our date. They moved Renfield, another horror comedy, onto our date. The to crush the there. movie. It's all designed to snuff out this film. Wow. Here's the thing. <laughs> Listen, to everybody who's watching right now, what other confirmation do you need? I always say, if you are not in a head-on collision with the devil, it's because you're both <laughs> walking the same direction. And so Amen. here, take it, I take it as a compliment. People would be like, I don't know if I want to get involved in all that. Let me just tell you, let me tell you the bad news. If you're not experiencing some level of warfare in your life right now, it's because you're not fighting on the field. You might be on the wrong team. And so here's the thing. We are called to this, guys, as a body of Christ. We are called to confront. And I, listen, here, I will say this. As somebody who used to be an atheist, I will say one isolated event, it's happenstance. Two, three, four. Okay, it's getting weird, but it's probably all easily explainable. But the totality of everything that these guys just explains point to only one source, and it's demonic. But we know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Guys, right now, we've got one last limited opportunity uh, this weekend to really slam this thing. And it's so funny where, where it's like the, the viewers are saying this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. The critics are saying this is one of the worst. And listen, we know the critics said the same thing about the ministry of Jesus. The people who received the ministry of Jesus wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. And then the people who, who were critics of it um, obviously crucified him. And so to me, this is the ministry of Jesus on display through this film. There is no such thing as coincidence. The idea that you have this one-two punch with nefarious and come out in Jesus' name, obviously, was out first. Uh, it's the time of the, it's the, it's the season for this. God is moving this movie out into society because people need to say it. Basically, it's good versus evil. It's the, you know, it's God versus the devil. And so one of the things we did with the movie, which I think is, is, was what the Lord wanted, was we take the devil and we drag him out of the darkness into the light. We'll show the face of the devil in this movie. Now, people will be scared by that. They look at the poster. Personally, we wouldn't go to this movie if we saw the poster, but that poster was designed for young people to come to the movie, non-believers to come to the movie so they would see the material. Okay. It's a Trojan horse, like you, like you always right, say. Right. I mean, the bottom line is that once you're in the theater, they're going to get God. Okay. 
That's what we're doing here. And there's no demonics. There's no satanics. There's no sex. There's no bad uh, language. It, it's a scary movie in the sense that you're seeing how the devil works. And it's two guys speaking to each other for a good part of that. Now, I know that's hard for people to relate to, but you need to trust us. We're the guys who did God's Not Dead, God's Not Dead too. Do You Believe, Unplanned. We, the fruit of our tree is obvious. And I will say to you this, we would never betray, betray our brothers and sisters in Christ. But I am telling you, you need to see this movie. Trust us. If you don't like it, you get out to us. We'll pay for your ticket. OK, I'm not worried about the money. This is ministry. Right. There's a reviewer who's a total sold out believer. And he said when he, he came to our premiere and he said, this movie is the equivalent of a theological drive by shooting in a good way. So what happens is we get those we get those nonbelievers into the audience, into the seats and then they're watching a psychological thriller, and all of a sudden, without them realizing it, they're plugged into a, a, a discussion, a nonstop discussion slash argument about the great questions of, of life and God, demons and angels, and how things work and what hell's plan is and what heaven's plan is. And ironically, in this sort of post-Christian society that we find ourselves in largely, um, if we had a priest or a pastor discussing these issues, the audience wouldn't pay attention. But since we have a demon discussing them, ironically, we're using, this is going to sound crazy, we're using a demon to preach the gospel, much like the screw tape letters, but he's preaching it from the other side of the mirror. And with malice. Right. But so, it validates everything we as Christians know. So you're seeing the bad guy's hatred against Christianity. But like there's a scene where he says, the, the other guy, the atheist, says to him, you believe in God? He says, of course, he exists, but we we hate him. Right. You know, that, that's the kind of the thing we're talking about. The thinks he's an idiot. He's like, we don't have beliefs. We have knowledge. And, right. and his knowledge is there is a creator God. He just happens to despise that creator God. And that's 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 the juice. That's the engine that our story gets to run on. Yeah, and you know, I just want to say, listen, the the devil is always portrayed as an angel of light in culture. And so it's very interesting to me that when we actually show the devil for who he is, when we show demons for who he is, there's a level of suppression to that. And so I listen, for all of you watching right now, we are actively engaged in spiritual warfare. I believe that we need to we need to mobilize and come together and break through this next barrier. I just want to confess, when I first saw the movie poster, I did initially think Think it was a horror film. My Long Island campus is across the street from the Amityville Horror House. And, uh, you know, we see horror films come through on the regular. And I just simply thought that was it. But I thought to myself, after I found out that it's a movie about deliverance, a movie about exorcism, it's a movie about uh, the demonic realm and that demonic conversation that happens. I was pleasantly surprised because they said, man, it's about time as believers that we utilize wisdom and we put things in a package that disarms people who are not saved. You know, when you're fishing, you're going to you're going to always catch a fish that's in alignment with the lure that you're using. And so this is this is wisdom. This is the Bible says he who wins souls is wise. And so I actually believe of all the movies, listen, come out in Jesus name was pretty obvious. It was an incredible experience. Many people were saved and delivered. But I love the fact that God uh, put this movie together in such a way through Chuck and through Carrie that it would really disarm people who might have some resistance to it. Um, here's the thing. Let, let's go a little bit deeper, though. Maybe you guys can talk about what do you think is going to happen when people show up? Because I want to set some expectations. I watched the movie. I had the privilege of seeing the movie. And I know what kind of experience I went through. I'll be honest with you guys. I was. It was riveting. And there were several moments of like, jump up out of my seat. I felt the fire of God. I felt the presence of God. To me, there is something about actually hearing the devil talk. And for those of you who are all religious and you're like, oh, I can't believe they would do that. Listen, when you're reading scripture, you're you're being given a biblical account of full-on conversations that Satan had with Jesus in the wilderness. And so this, this is nothing more than us being able to get a window into how the devil thinks, which we already have in scripture. So what's the experience going to be like as people are watching i think it's amazing uh, first of all the movie is anointed it's not us we're two guys from new jersey and new york we can't do dialogue like this like that trust me when i tell you our conversations are not like this but i will say that uh, we've had conversions 
We've had people in the theater uh, profoundly, deeply If They can't come back. They come back every day, two, three, four days in a row. And they bring 10 friends, 20 friends, uh, uh, just all every level of reaction, which we're totally surprised at uh, in a multitude of ways. We've had people say, you know, I, I found forgiveness. I found... This is the Lord working because the reactions across the board on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's understand one thing. The world hates Jesus and thereby hates us. Right. Yeah. And yet we have a 97, 98 percent Rotten Tomatoes rating. And yet the critics hate the movie. So what does that say? The people love the we have movie. A 67 point spread, which is the highest of any faith and values film ever. ever. The audience is at 97, 98. The critics are at 30. Wow. And that's right. only because it was at 23 the day before, but a, a reviewer came in and gave us a great rating because right. he said it changed me. It profoundly affected me. The, there's going to be a profound revelation. You're going to be riveted. You're going to see things. But it's not unlike every single horror movie that comes out where they blaspheme God, where they, sacri they, they commit sacrilege, blasphemy, all these terrible things, spinning heads, pea soup on the wall, walking upside down, just this, this tremendous evil. This is the total reverse. This is C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters, the, uh, the mature the version. Mature version. Okay. And what we see is we see the battle for one soul take place in real time in a discussion over a table. And we also see, I think the skills that fall from people's eyes is that they realize if they're watching the film, we think we've been engaged in a cultural battle. And it's not. That's an illusion. We're engaged in a spiritual battle. Guys, I want you to be praying for Carrie and Chuck. I want you to be praying for this film. But more so than that, we don't just need prayers. The Bible says don't be hearers of the word, but also be doers. So I am asking you to mobilize. I started this video with this. I'm going to end with it. Get behind this thing. Let's fill up the movie theaters. I, yes, we saw deliverances happening and come out in Jesus' name, but I believe that the same thing can happen at the end of this movie. There's going to be people who are curious, people who just need somebody to step up and say, hey, this movie was more than fiction. This movie is real. That's why you felt what you felt. Can I pray for anybody? And I believe that this weekend we have another opportunity in the theaters uh, to, to evangelize and do the work of the Lord. Guys, I cannot thank you enough for being on the show. Is there any last thing that you would send somebody to a website? Obviously, we're sending them to the, the, the theaters. I was just in the theater, and I saw the poster. I saw the movie playing. It's, it's available almost everywhere. But is there anywhere else you guys would send them? Whoisnefarious.com. Uh, Whoisnefarious.com. Uh, but I would just like to say this last thing. I can tell your people that are listening Fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm telling you that the Lord had us make this movie. He spoke to us. He guided us. He protected us. He walked us through it. This is the tip of the iceberg, what we experienced. And I'm telling you right now, he made this movie for you so that you could evangelize other people. And some of you actually need to see this movie because you don't realize that the devil has tricked you into doing certain things like yoga and Reiki and playing with tarot cards and all these Ouija crazy boards, things and Ouija whole, boards. Yeah. You know, so we're just asking you, be with us, be with Jesus, support the movie if you can. Otherwise, it's going to go away. Yeah, that's so good. Well, listen, we're going to get behind it, guys. We're going to do everything that we can to mobilize the army. As you guys know, I constantly say we are not raising up an audience. We are raising up an army. And so I want to ask you guys to take that step in the right direction this weekend. Make it happen, guys. Let's flood the theaters. Um, Carrie and Chuck, I just want to sincerely thank you as brothers in Christ for your work. Um, man, it is so needed. C.S. Lewis was uh, a tremendous asset for the body of Christ, but I've been saying for years, we need we need others. And so you guys are carrying that mantle and running with it. So we honor you and thank you so, so much.